He was supposed to be translating and sign at Nelson Mandela's memorial service. Instead, he was flapping his arms in meaningless, repetitive gestures and shuffling around, faking it so badly that even if you didn't know sign language, you knew he was either an imposter or a nut job. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Judine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thami Jansi, the supposed sign interpreter who was within inches of President Obama, failed to sign a single word correctly. But he did manage to flash the gang sign for the California Mafia Crips Athens Park Boys and something that looked like the University of Texas hook em horns gesture. And then there's this one. Well, you can figure it out. <laughs> and get this, he did the same thing last year at a presidential event. The African National Congress, however, never even entertained the complaint. Here's a message to the government of South Africa. If you can't find any good sign interpreters, I have a recommendation. Try something like this. And now as a public service to those of our viewers who have difficulty with their hearing, I will repeat the top story of the day, aided by the headmaster of the New York School for the Heart of Hearing, Garrett Morris. <laughs> our top story tonight... Our top story tonight... Elisabeth Francisco, Francisco Franco is still Franco dead. Is still dead. Good night and have a pleasant Good night tomorrow. and have a pleasant tomorrow. But Tommy is not just a fraud, you know. He's a whack job, a violent schizophrenic who spent as long as a year in a mental institution, was to be institutionalized the day of Mandela's service, but left to attend the funeral, where he admits he heard voices and saw angels soaring into the stadium while he did his sign two-step. But folks... It gets even better. He's a violent criminal, a frequent guest of the South African jails for charges like rape, theft, burglary, property damage, murder, attempted murder, and kidnapping. So mentally unfit, he wasn't even competent to stand trial on some of those charges. And that murder charge, well, the South African government can't find the contents of the murder file, although they say the case has been resolved and is disposed of. And South Africa is a nuclear power? Hey, maybe the angels that he saw flew off with the file. Now, this would be hysterical if it weren't so deadly dangerous. So what's up with the Secret Service? How do they not screen someone standing within inches of the President of the United States of America? A minimal investigation would reveal the so-called signer was a fraud, a violent mental schizophrenic, and a violent criminal. And you guys get paid for what? But then again, these are the same bozos about whom chronicles of ineptitude are rampant. You remember those party crashers, the Salahis? Not on the White House guest list, but want in on that presidential party? No problem. The Secret Service will let you in even at a time when threats against the president are at an all-time high. But to give the Secret Service some credit, they are sensitive to the economic woes of other nations, openly supporting the economy of Colombia by enlisting the services of prostitutes. That behavior, described by some as falling under the long-tolerated and unwritten code, what happens in the Secret Service stays in the Secret Service. And what's that? Prostitution isn't illegal in Colombia? Oh, I feel so much better. And I'll bet those Secret Service guys' wives do too. So what's the fuss? Only the president's whereabouts and his itinerary are at risk. Of course, the then head of the Secret Service says this kind of behavior is an anomaly. So why is it when the Secret Service shows up in town, they're referred to as the Secret Circus? Okay, 
forget the sex stuff, forget the party crashers, explain how you let the vice president's secret service vehicle get stolen from a hotel parking lot in Detroit. Might the location have something to do with it? Might something have been going on in that hotel? Now, some say both South Africa and the Secret Service were responsible for the president's safety. But the safety of the president of the United States is within the exclusive jurisdiction of the Secret Service. How could you possibly rely on South Africa, given their familiarity with Tammy's criminal, mental, and fraudulent behavior? And how does the Secret Service permit a clearly dangerous man within inches of the president of the free world? Look, I know the integrity, the devotion, and the courage of many agents in the Secret Service. These guys, men and women, will take a bullet for the president. That's not even up for debate here. But come on, guys. How do you not check this man out? I don't care if the Pope vouches for him. Your job is to check him out again. It's Law Enforcement 101. Or were you too busy looking to bump up the South African economy with your secret circus? Why wasn't this plan better, given that Nelson Mandela was of deteriorating health and on life support for months? Is everyone incompetent in the Obama administration? But hey, you can rely on good old Jay Carney to cover for you. Secret Service uh, does extraordinary work to um, ensure the safety and security of its protectees, principally the President of the United States. Really, Jay? Extraordinary work? Although, honestly, Jay, I have a better idea. Instead of wasting your breath, making believe the Secret Service did a good job in South Africa, I would encourage you to tell the Secret Service to beef up the president's security. Their resources would be better spent making sure that Michelle Obama doesn't kill the president for taking that selfie with that blonde in South Africa at the service. With me, conservative columnist and author of Never Trust a Liberal Over Three, Ann Coulter. All right, Ann, can you...